All right. Evaluating limits analytically. Basically, the first way you do any kind of limit analytically is plug in the number. Negative 2. Always, that's the first thing. So let's plug in negative 2. Let's see if it works. That will be the square root of 3 times negative 2 squared minus 5. Which will give you, this gives you 4. 3 times 4 is 12. So what's my answer? Square root 7. So, the limit as x approaches negative 2 of this function would be the square root of 7. Basically, the output is the square root of 7, so so is the limit. Okay. If you approach from both sides of negative 2, you would approach the square root of 7. Okay. That's the easiest. Always, always, always plug it in. Easy. Now, when I plug in negative 3 here, does it work? No, because when I plug in negative 3 on the bottom, you get 0, and you cannot have a 0 in the denominator. On this one, when you plug in 3, will it work? No, because the bottom cannot have a 0. So right away, neither of these have an output. So we somehow got to find the limit in some other manner. Okay. So this method the book calls dividing out. This one's called rationalizing. Dividing out basically means factor top and bottom. See if something divides or cancels. So we're going to factor top, factor bottom. The top, I have a certain way of factoring these. You can do it your way if you have a better way. But here's my way of factoring the top. You multiply the 2 and the negative 3, get negative 6. You put the 5 on the bottom. Again, to get that negative 6, you multiply 2 and negative 3. What two numbers multiply to get negative 6 and add to get 5? 6 and negative 1. 6 and negative 1? Yeah. So we now have x plus 6, x minus 1. But this 2 right here, because I multiplied it by the negative 3, I have to divide it back out. It's called bottoms up method. Some people call it that. Which 6 divided by 2 is 3. And this one doesn't reduce. So you take this 2 and bottoms up, bring it up. It is a, my, one of my favorite ways to factor that kind of problem. So when you write limits, it's kind of stupid, but you need to get used to rewriting the whole thing every time. You have to write that limit sign. I hate it. But for the AP test, if it's a free response, you need to write it every time. So the top factors as x plus 3, 2x minus 1. Okay, the top factors right here. The bottom, most of you are hopefully pretty good at this. Difference of squares. The bottoms is a difference of squares. Now, does anything cancel? I now have the limit as x approaches negative 3 of 2x minus 1 over x minus 3. Now, can we plug in negative 3 to our new equation? By the way, this equation would give you the exact same graph as this equation, except where the hole was will be filled. That's what's so cool about this. It makes a whole new graph exactly the same, but fills in the hole. So with this new equation, we can now plug in negative 3. So we have 2 times negative 3 minus 1 over negative 3 minus 3, which we look like we're going to get negative 6 minus 1 is negative 7 over negative 6. So what's my answer? My answer is positive 7, 6. So 
And what we approach from both sides of negative 3 is 7 6, or 1 and 1 6. We made a new equation, which we could then just plug it in. Why do I put the number 56 here? 1, 2, 56. <coughs> this is problem 56 in your book. A lot of times I use problems out of your book, and so I'll put the number so you can reference it. This is called rationalizing. It's a weird method, but get used to it. We use the conjugate of the top, and we multiply it top and bottom. Now, don't forget your limit. I know it's annoying. When we multiply the top, what's the square root times the square root? Doesn't it drop the square root off? And when you multiply this times 2 and this times negative 2, doesn't it disappear? Do you see a difference in squares here? Difference in squares always loses the inside. Because 2 times this and negative 2 times this is going to drop out. And then we're left with the negative 2 times 2, which is minus 4. Do you see how the whole square root dropped off the top? The bottom, not as nice. But let's actually leave it for now. You'll see something as that. Some of you will be able to see right away why I left that. Now, do you see this x minus 3? Look at the top. What's it going to become? Isn't that going to end up being x minus 3? Do you see something? Won't this cancel? Leaving you the limit as x approaches 3 of what, what's left on top? One over. Okay. Some of you say, what does that do? What well, can you now plug in? Three? Yeah. One over the square root of three plus one plus two. And what is the square, what's this going to be? 2, because the square root of 4 is 2. And 2 plus 2 is? So my answer is? 1 fourth.